In the Dune universe, there were three major wars that were instrumental in shaping and reshaping humanity, the destiny of humanity, for the ages to come. There was first the Butlerian Jihad, which happened 10,000 years before the events of Dune, and then the War of the Sisterhoods, that would take place 5,000 years in the future after it. Then in the middle, there is one more, which is called Paul's Jihad, or the Muad'Dib's Jihad, a war so catastrophic that it caused the deaths of over 61 billion people all over the galaxy. This jihad began with Paul Atreides' ascension to the Lion Throne of the Emperor in Arakin and went on for 12 years beginning in 10,196 AG and then concluding in the year 10,208 AG. So just to be honest with you, Frank Herbert didn't really mention a lot about Muad'Dib's jihad in his books. He rather elaborated well on what came before it and what came after it with Children of Dune, deliberately avoiding the middle as it was for the imagination to fill in. He knew that if every question was to be answered, the mystery and the enigma of the story would lose steam. Anyway, I'm no Frank Herbert, so I will be looking at this in more detail, at what led to the Jihad with the Dune storyline, then add a little bit to the middle section taking a bit from the expanded lore and then come back to Herbert. <laughs> I can already hear the screeching in the background. Let's just agree that half of the information here will be semi-canon, but still informative nonetheless. So let's begin with how it all started. The rise of Paul Atreides to the throne of the Emperor in the Dune universe is a tale of destiny, betrayal and the intricate maneuvering of both political and mystical forces. It is a journey that began long before Paul's birth rooted in ancient prophecies, in interstellar rivalries, and the secrets of the desert planet called Arrakis. So Paul was a member of House Atreides, which was one of the great houses of the Landsrat, an assembly of noble families that governed much of the Imperium alongside the Imperial House Corino. The House Atreides traced its lineage back to ancient times to Greece. Paul's father, Duke Leto Atreides, was a man of principle, known for his fairness, wisdom, and the loyalty he inspired in his subjects. Under his rule, House Atreides became renowned not just for its power, but for the loyalty of its vassals and the love of its subjects. Yet, it was this very reputation that made House Atreides a target by both their enemies and one that was almost like family to them. The ruling emperor, Shadam IV of House Corino, started to grow increasingly wary of Duke Leto's growing influence and popularity. The Emperor, seeking to neutralize his potential threat, devised a cunning plan in league with House Harkonnen, the mortal enemies of House Atreides. This plan set the stage for the downfall of Leto and the ascension of Paul Atreides. So Arrakis, also known as Dune, is the most valuable planet in the known universe, being the only source of the Spice Melange that grants extended life, enhancing mental abilities and is essential for space travel. So control of Arrakis meant control of the Spice and ergo control of the known universe. When the Emperor ordered House Atreides, Duke Leto, to take over the stewardship of Arrakis from House Harkonnen, it seemed like an opportunity for Duke Leto to further elevate his house. However, it was a trap. The Emperor had secretly allied with Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, promising to support the Harkonnens in reclaiming Arrakis after they eliminated House Atreides, and with this they did. And while the political machinations were unfolding, a deeper, more mystical plot was revealed. For generations, the Bene Gesserit, an ancient and secretive sisterhood, had been manipulating bloodlines across the known universe to create a being called the Kwisatz Haderach, a super being, a prophesied male figure who would possess immense powers, total prescience, including the ability to see the future. Paul Atreides was the product of this breeding program, though his birth was a divergence coming into existence a generation earlier than planned. Anyway, his upbringing was steeped in Bene Gesserit training, as well as the military and political teachings provided by the Atreides family. All of this endowed him with great abilities, physical and mental, far surpassing those of ordinary men. He began to experience strange visions and dreams and sensing a fate that would guide his path. Upon the betrayal of House Atreides, his family's entire military would be destroyed by a surprise attack by the Harkonnens and the Sardaukar. This will force him to flee and take refuge with the Fremen that lives in the deserts of Dune. And this is where the action really began. 
So the deserts of Arrakis were home to the Fremen, a fierce people who had adapted to the extreme conditions of their planet. The Fremen had long been oppressed by the Harkonnens, but they also held on to a prophecy of a messiah who would lead them to freedom and a green paradise. Long have they waited for the voice from the outer world, the Lisan al Gayib. Paul and his mother Jessica were taken in by the Fremen, where Paul assumed the Fremen name Muad'Dib. Among the Fremen, Paul's abilities were then seen as fulfillment of their prophecy, and he steadily and quickly rose to the position of a leader. He then learned the ways of the desert, mastering the use of spice and even riding the giant sandworms that roamed the sands. Him riding the special one which was known as the Shai Hulud or the Grandfather of the Desert. Paul's transformation was complete when he drank the water of life and began to mature with his prescient powers. He had then become one with the desert, gaining the loyalty of the Fremen and harnessing their power. Paul's time with them revealed to him the true potential of Arrakis. The people there, the Fremen, held the key to desert power, the ability to control not just spies, but the entire planet through their intimate knowledge of its ecology and the formidable force of their warriors and the sandworms. He then realized that with the Fremen at his side, he could even challenge the Emperor himself. The final confrontation came when Paul led his forces against the Emperor and the combined might of the Sardaukar, the Emperor's elite troops on Arrakis. In a decisive battle, Paul's forces triumphed, capturing the Emperor and killing the remnants of the Harkonnen. There he stood after beckoning the representatives of the Landstrat hovering in space to acknowledge him as the new Emperor, after Shaddam IV conceded, which he tried to also gain legitimacy by betrothing himself to the previous Emperor's daughter, and also revealing that he was part Harkonnen, which by law gives him authority over not just Caladan and his vassals from his father's side, but also over Gaidi Prime and its subjects from his mother's side, as well as Caton and the remaining Sarkar through marriage. It was here that the events that led to the bloodiest war took an irreversible turn. The Landsrat Great Houses, who themselves have been vying for more independence and autonomy, as well as eyeing more power, refused to bend the knee, and instead turned their backs. For Paul, his visions and the active conscious memories of innumerable ancestors made him subject to fate, as he would then lead a crusade, or rather a jihad, to reclaim the known universe. Hence this became the Muad'Dib's Jihad, the holy war that followed his ascension to power, which is one of the most profound and transformative events in the history of the Dune universe. This Jihad was not merely a series of military campaigns, it was more of a sweeping tide of religious and cultural favor that engulfed the known universe, fundamentally changing and altering the course of civilizations and reshaping the very fabric of human existence. The seeds of the Muad'Dib's Jihad were sown in the deserts of Arrakis, when Paul Atreides known to the Fremen as Muad'Dib had transformed from heir of a fallen house into a living legend and an emperor. As Muad'Dib, Paul became the fulfillment of the Fremen's ancient prophecies, a messianic figure who would lead them to freedom from oppression and usher in a new age. Paul's rise to power was inseparable from religious beliefs of the Fremen. They saw in him not just a leader, but a prophet a godlike figure who could bend the forces of the universe to his will. The Fremen's devotion to the Muad'Dib was absolute, and their faith in him became the driving force behind the Jihad that was spread across the galaxy. On the other hand, the Great Houses were always in line with the Imperium, acting as a countermeasure and a balance of power between their superior numbers against the superior force of the Emperor and his Sardaukar. But once the threat of the Sardaukar was removed in Arrakis, the Great Houses launched at the prospect of independence, and some plan on even becoming the Imperial House itself. None of them expected to be annihilated for this. They were acting as of their own experience of centuries, which taught them that they should jump at opportunities, and that House Karina would also have expected nonetheless. But they misunderstood their new opponents. What seemed to the Great Houses to be a matter of politics was to the Fremen in the province of religion. The leaders of the Great Houses saw themselves as taking advantage of a moment of political flux. The Fremen, on the other hand, saw unbelievers defying their Mahadi, as apostates and the ones that had to be wiped out. To the Fremen, rebellion against Paul Muad'Dib was an attack on the Messiah, promised to them for thousands of years and now has come. The Fremen followed Paul out of a religious belief, but trust by a desire for vengeance upon the Harkonnens 
and the Imperium at large, which had oppressed them from time immemorial. It was their traditions and their religion which turned a war to consolidate control of an empire into a bloody jihad. Now we come to the expanded lore. So the conquest of the system of Marathon, controlled by the great house of the McNaughts, was the first clue the universe had that the rules of the empire had changed. This was one of the first engagements. The McNaughts were one of the most powerful of the old great houses, and the family had a tradition of cautious, shrewd leadership along with a reputation as a dangerous enemy. The McNaught forces were sizable and well-trained, well in Lance Rat terms. They were supported by three lesser houses from the neighboring system of Kalak. The story spread by the few hundred survivors of the battles of Marathon and Kalak shocked all who heard them. The forces of the McNaughts and their allies had been obliterated. What made the news border on the incredible was that this had been accomplished with a force of 10 Fremen legions, which means some 300,000 men. The entire armies of the two systems had been wiped out by a force less than one-tenth of its size. Had the remaining great houses but known it, that there was more to fear, these victories, the later victories, would have been accomplished without the use of the Fedakin, the elite of the Fremen guerrillas, the chisel that chips while the hammer hits. At the early stages of the conflict, the Fedakin were unknown, and the Fremen too as a whole were poorly understood. Rebellion continued world after world, refusing to bend the knee to the new emperor, and the Fremen would secure victories across the galaxy again and again. As these once natives of the desert world Arrakis moved from planet to planet and system to system, they encountered many fates not their own, some involving tenets or rituals that are loathsome to them. As time, worlds and lives of millions and then billions passed, the religious motivations of the Fremen came to play an ever greater part in their battles. Slowly, the assurance of a secure throne for their Mahdi came to be joined by the desire for a purified empire. A particular target for this religious culling came to be the fates dominated by the Bene Gesserit, the order which had trained and attempted to dominate Paul's mother, the order which had striven so long to produce and use the Kwisatz Haderach that Paul was. Since long back, the Fremen's attitude towards the Bene Gesserit had always been at best ambivalent and usually fearful and antagonistic. But with the coming of Paul Muad'Dib, their ambivalence was over. They could produce their own reverend mothers, as they had for thousands of years. Jessica was all the better Jezreel they could ever need, and she had fulfilled the prophecies. These attitudes on the part of Paul and the Fremen were reinforced by the Bene Gesserit support for the forces allied against them. The Bene Gesserit were faced with the prospect of their plans of the past and counted centuries, culminating in a person who was beyond their control, and it was more than they could bear like sacrificing millennia for nothing. Rather than have the Kwisatz Haderach live independently of them, they hoped to kill him and produce another one. In one of the greatest engagements, with the help of the Bene Gesserit, the forces of the Landsrat houses that had not yet been defeated met the Fremen legions in a system of Molotov along with the Sardaukar forces by their side. Although appearing formidable, they were still defeated nonetheless. When the Fedakin arrived, the elite, this was the greatest battle, but not the final as for years to come, the war would still rage on. And yes, 61 billion lives would be lost. In the end, the Bene Gesserit survived. The Lance Rat, the Spacing Guild and the Quorm, the Merchant Isle, also survived but as shells of their former selves. This jihad spread throughout the known universe, pillaging millions of planets. A few other notable engagements include one such on Naraj and its moons, where the Fremen Fedakin commander Farok was the head of the campaign. The only planet that was spared the raging fire of Muad'Dib's Jihad was the very homeworld of House Atreides, Galadan. Lady Jessica, the mother of Paul Muad'Dib, refused the Fremen any access to the planet, including any type of religious pilgrimage. The Jihad ended in the year 10,208 AG, and according to the Muad'Dib, Paul Atreides, he put the Jihad's casualties at 61 billion the sterilization of 90 planets, the demoralization of 500 additional worlds, and furthermore, 40 different religions were wiped out, along with their followers. And that, my friends, is what followed after Dune Part 2, Paul's Jihad. So if you like this video, then watch this other one too. And if you want to browse for other 
sci-fi content and warhammer content then check out our channel subscribe like for support and bang on the bell icon for notifications on new video uploads till the next time take care boys